please stand. God be with you all, and welcome to this celebration of Holy Eucharist on this, the 15th Sunday after the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, great to be with you all, and great to have visitors with us uh, again this morning, and, and old friends. Uh, welcome all, and welcome to those who are, are uh, worshiping with us uh, on our YouTube channel. I'm going to say a word about that YouTube broadcast and, uh, and its future at the end of the service today. We're going to follow the order of services. You'll find it on now page two of your worship booklet. And all you need now is in the service booklet. Uh, I believe there might be some references for communion hymns. Is that right, Peter? Right. So you could use your blue books again for those communion hymns if you want to sing along at that time as well. But the rest is all here. And um, glad to see you're all wearing your masks. And of course, you were screened. and. Uh, and checked in, and uh, you still see we have all the arrows on the floors and, and so on. And um, I wanted to say a word about the hymn that we just sang. Um, uh, Peter told you where they came from, but uh, I want to say that uh, every Sunday is Resurrection Day. So very appropriate to be singing that great Easter hymn on this Resurrection Day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also we pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
remain standing together, let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause and despoils of life those who despoils them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 125. <clears throat> Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. The hills stand around Jerusalem, so does the Lord stand around about his people from this time forth forevermore. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers. But peace be upon Israel. Amen. A reading from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a per poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law of transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, 
if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice, but a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile uh, of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside, in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Loving God, grant each of us a word from your word in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus set out and went away. Why does anyone go anywhere? Some good friends of ours were here last weekend, and they talked to Jill and I about some of the places in the world that they had been blessed to be able to visit, and they asked us, where would you go if you could go? And Jill and I smiled and looked at each other because we had already had a few ideas, and um, we didn't need to cons con uh, confer privately, um, and we told them a few of them. And then a few days ago, uh, another very good friend of mine, who may retire, God willing, near when I might do so, we're the same age and we've been ordained within a year of each other, um, he said to me out of the blue, um, you know, if you were to go to Ireland when you first retire, we would go with you. And uh, knowing that it was on Jill's list and mine, I said, well, what about Scotland? And he said, or Scotland. Um, <laughs> So it was pretty clear they were up for travel with us, and, and that warmed my heart. So I have to admit that uh, dreaming about places where we may one day get to visit and explore and enjoy is kind of inspiring. It's attractive. Now, maybe you do a little of that dreaming, too. And having our best friends there to enjoy some of them with us is even more enticing. God willing, we may get to go to some of those places with friends or on our own. Now, you and I would have different reasons for going uh, places. 
because uh, maybe on the one hand we feel that they are part of our call. God calls us and equips us. He gives us gifts and abilities, and we could use them there, maybe for the sake of other people. Or maybe we're called and we've gone places in our lives to earn income for us and for the people we care about. That's why some of us came here to Perth. We might go to other places because we've been invited or because of who will go with us. We might go to see something new or to get inspired. We might go to get rest. We might go, as the Americans say, just to vacate, to get away for a while from the place where most of our work and responsibilities are centered. So why does Jesus go where he goes? In this passage from the Gospel, Mark says he set out and went to a place called Tyre, part of the Syrophoenician Empire, because he needed a break. And he was up there incognito, or so he thought. He was on retreat, you might say. And, uh, and after all, he, the few friends who went with him, uh, and St. Mark's first readers who would have heard this story before us, they all knew that there were predominantly Gentiles up there in Syrophoenicia, Tyre and Sidon, and, um, and Jesus' work had been almost exclusively uh, down south with Jews, the children of Israel, and uh, so it's a pretty good bet that if you went north, you'd have less to do um, because they weren't your responsibility or you hadn't been working with them, and so Jesus got away uh, to where he could be a relative unknown and have no expectations placed on him, and I think about that myself sometimes. Um, but, as seems always to happen, word gets out, as St. Mark likes to say, immediately. And one of the foreigners of that region barges in, it seems, on his getaway spot, yearning for help which only Jesus can give, so there would be no more resting or retreating for Jesus. And after what happens there, uh, we might wonder why Jesus wouldn't just go back home again, but we're told he goes on to another place in that same region, Sidon, a place like Tyre, whose name would call to mind to Jews, an unsavory place of outsiders, and even enemies of Israel in the past. So much so, uh, that in times past, after their many nasty encounters, um, making them pay tributes, sometimes raiding from the north. Um, the people of Israel at times referred to them as those dogs up there in the north. In every age, it seems, it doesn't take much to come up with ways to call people names to show that they are something other than us. And so that was going on right there. But maybe the clue to the question of why go there for Jesus, and then why stay there, uh, in Jesus' first is is there in Jesus' first encounter, that was supposed to be far outside his usual circle of activity. Jesus knew what his disciples and his countrymen thought about people like that Syrophoenician woman. He'd read the scriptures and those references. Um, Jesus actually says out loud what uh, sounds like a striking bit of verbal fencing with the woman. When she barges in and asks for Jesus' help, he says, you know, let the little children, let the children, that is the children of Israel, be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And that's what Jesus had been doing, not about children and dogs and, and food, but he'd been feeding first those he was called to serve, First, he began being and sharing good news, as God called him to do, with the people of Israel. So was he voicing his own thoughts and prejudices or, uh, or just other people's that the woman would have expected to hear from a Jewish rabbi? Um, uh, who knows? Uh, he pretty much calls that woman um, uh, the lower priority, at the very least, a dog compared with children. Jews thought of dogs as all unclean. Um, outside animals, we would call them strays, at the very least, or wild. 
But people up north were not so offended um, with, uh, with, the, with animals, and they thought about them as sometimes okay, uh, and under the table, kind of pets, we might say. So, um, and that's true today too, of course, we have different views about our dogs and cats these days, but even today, uh, perhaps you would agree with me, or perhaps not, I would say that um, uh, I'd want to see children fed first, uh, and especially my own children, before I've considered if I can afford to look after a dog. And Jesus is using that same kind of calculus when he speaks first in such a striking way to that woman. Of course, it was not about the difference between children and dogs, or strain animals, or pets. Um, it was just the truth that Jesus had a mission, and up to that point it was pretty clear. And this has guided where he's gone up until this point in his ministry. That's what he's saying to the woman. He may have known exactly what was coming next. He may have known, uh, she may have known exactly what he was going to say when he offered that opening statement in this short little debate with this woman. He, he probably said what she would have expected from a rabbi from the south, as I've said, but it didn't matter to her. Didn't matter at all. She'd already thrown herself down at Jesus' feet in her longing to get help for her daughter. She knew she wasn't one of Jesus' people, she knew there were rules and prohibitions about Jews and Gentiles. She even knew what was and what wasn't an accepted way for women to interact with men in public in that time and place, and sadly, that's still true in places today. But she pushed past all those limits, the limits of national or religious or racist boundaries, and sought what she needed for her daughter. That was what was important, full stop. Whether she was hoping for this all along or not, Jesus was about to get um, a wider view that he would need if he were to go the other places he was meant to go. She said, sir, even the little dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And that faithful and humble and tenacious set of words uh, are immediately heralded by, heralded by Jesus. And we've been reading them ever since. So that should tell us something. If you were here at the 8 o'clock service this morning when we use our beloved uh, uh, Book of Common Prayer and the words of Thomas Cranmer, we always come to the Lord's table by quoting this woman and kneeling and saying, we do not presume to come to this thy table. We're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under the, thy table. So she is famous ever since. St. Mark tells us that the, that the woman's daughter was healed that very hour. So in a revolutionary new way, what this poor and desperate foreigner said to Jesus became rather like what the great Moses and Abraham uh, said more than once in scriptures when they were bargaining with God or pleading with God. Um, they wanted God to do more to change tack uh, in his dealing with his people, and he did. And in the same way, that woman pleaded with Jesus to widen his circle, and he did. So what's great here is that the woman with the need for someone that she loved believed he could do it and that he would. She pressed on, and her only line in the script was these few words this great rebuttal uh, in a strange little Middle Eastern kind of debate with the very Lord of creation. She wanted and she needed something and she believed Jesus could do it for her. She believed that he could go further than he maybe or certainly other people expected him to go. And she was right, of course. And without leaving the room, Jesus begins to expand his world and the reach of his healing ministry. Then, having gone there, instead of business as usual, helping only Jews experience the power of this new kingdom of God breaking into their world, Jesus stays in that new, ever-widening circle, and he goes to another Gentile town. And he was, in a sense, already beginning to do himself 
what he would pray would happen next for the ears and the tongue of that man in nearby Sidon. Remember he said, Ephatha, be opened. And it was not the only opening that was occurring before our eyes. Soon after this, Jesus' ministry would expand even further. He would go on to feed a crowd of thousands, mostly Gentiles. So something expansive, something opening or enlarging is going on here. Could it be that God is saying through Mark's gospel to us, if it happened for Jesus and those whom he first touched, don't you believe it could happen to you? It could include you as well? Do you believe God can go further than you once thought? Well, so can you with God's help. When the power and presence of Jesus are fully believed and taught and lived and known to be in the center of a household, just like that retreat house that Jesus went on, uh, went into, or this house right here, uh, word can't help but get out. It cannot escape notice, and we wouldn't want it to. All around the world, but especially where the people of distinctive faith and commitment are most active, uh, other people, people we might not know, or they might not know, or even family or friends or neighbors we wouldn't have expected, get drawn in by God to come and see and experience what we have. Some will come for themselves. Some will come seeking grace for those they love. Some will bring others trying to believe, as we try to believe, that our Lord has the power to change lives. Now, if you think about that phenomenon and where it goes on in the world, sadly, I'd say this has been less so in churches in Canada, Anglican churches in Canada, I could go so far to say, than it has been in some of the centers of witness and worship and teaching that I admire, uh, places like uh, the homes of our brothers and sisters uh, in the churches of Nigeria, for instance, today. But it is more than possible for that to happen here too. And it begins or it restarts when you and I are open, more open, when we're willing to seek and serve and celebrate the good news of Jesus' love in the here and now. So the questions become not why do we go where we go, but where are you being called uh, to go? Where are you being called to be more open to God? In your life? Who are you asking God to reach? What relationship, what next step, what plan of action needs to be expanded in your life or opened up so that God's widening work of love can do its thing? And then in this rare new reset or reopening moment we are experiencing in the church in 2021, where are we being called? to be open and to go. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Would you stand with me please? Let us confess our faith as we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may uh, remain standing or, or kneel or be seated as is your custom for prayer. We will follow the prayers as uh, given in the bulletin with some slight modifications. But as we pray, we pray together and we pray for openness to hear God's word and to respond to God's word and to God's call. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In our worldwide Anglican communion, we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Justin of Canterbury, Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Shane, our bishop, Kenneth, our priest, and our wardens. And we also pray in our own diocese for our diocesan family. Today, for us here at St. James, and also for St. James in Leitrim, for all saints, Greeley, and the Reverend Joan Riding, and for St. Mary's of Russell and the Reverend Dr. Anne Quick. We also pray for all who labor for the good of our society on this Labor Day weekend. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our Queen Elizabeth and all in authority, for Justin, our Prime Minister, and all striving to keep us safe and well. Lord, hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. We pray that God would prosper and guide us in our affordable housing initiative and move the hearts of many in our town here in Perth and in the district to support it and to volunteer. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we pray particularly for all who are in need of God's help and our care. The Reverend Bill Simons, Reverend Dan Graves, the Robertson and Code families, Ruth, John Price and his family, Cheryl, Ruth, Shane, Brenda, Ted, Ron, Lori, Linda, Karen, David, Joanne, Lisa, Ken, Janiel, Robin, Peter, Cindy, Betty, Janet, John and Hilary, Shirley, Peggy, Maureen, Mary, Jimmy, Robert, Mary, Cheryl, Jeff, Helen, Junie, 
Heather, Bet, Colette, Adam, and another Linda and others who are in our hearts today. We pray for all who are sick, in quarantine and self-isolating, and for those who are afraid. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the response of the soul of Jane Robertson and all who have died in this pandemic and those who died in this past night. Lord, hear our prayer. And loving God, we thank you for your many gifts to us, for the love which brings us together, for the earth which provides for our needs, and for the new life you have given to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue in our prayers with the confession of our sins. Dear friends, in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Will you stand and where you are standing, uh, express the peace of Christ to those around you.
Now, as we stand together, we offer ourselves and these gifts, saying, Great and holy God, accept our offering of labor and love. May we bring you true and spiritual worship and be one with you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. I want to remind us all about how we're um, celebrating the uh, sacrament of Holy Communion now. Um, we uh, come forward at the instruction of our sides people uh, to guide us to stand while we're waiting on the white crosses and then to take places at one of the four crosses before the altar rail. And we stay standing, as it says in the bulletin, um, uh, so we're not touching the altar rail. And, um, and we can stand in family groups. If you're here as a couple or a small family, you can, you can share one cross, keeping the space with the next person beside you. Uh, you'll be offered both the bread and the wine of communion. And uh, if you're coming forward for a blessing, you can simply bow your head or cross your hands, and that's uh, a cue to me. Um, if you'd like to receive the bread only, you can do that again when the cup is offered you, and the words of administration will still be said. They're still true for you. And, uh, uh, and then make your way, washing your hands again on your way back to your pew and following the arrows around to the outside and, and up from the back. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you, a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup saying, this is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. 
Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Father, your word and sacrament give us food and life. May we who have shared in holy things bear fruit to your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord, amen. amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Be opened and hear God's call. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? Well, it's great to be with you this morning, and um, I don't know, was it still raining when you arrived? No, great. Well, that's good. Um, I want to say a word of thanks. Uh, Yesterday, um, uh, we were referred to as the Reverend Ken Davis and his team uh, because uh, uh, a number of us from the parish uh, worked uh, not just yesterday, but for a couple of days and a long day yesterday so that we could uh, really and truly celebrate the life of Jane Robertson, and I'm so grateful for all of that help. It was a hot day in the end, and uh, we had a large reception outside, kind of like a garden party with awnings, and uh, and, uh, I'm very grateful for that help. And so, uh, indeed, is the family, the Code and the Robertson families uh, who who we hosted, and indeed welcomed home uh, in many cases. Jane, who we uh, remembered yesterday, was uh, baptized, confirmed, and married here, and all of her children were baptized here. So people kept coming up to me all day long and saying, I was baptized here. Um, And that was kind of wonderful. So uh, uh, well done there. Uh, I've been speaking about or uh, making uh, invitations uh, to God's call. Uh, I'm going to do some more of that now, and then I'm going to invite Leanna to come up and and speak with us. Um, Last week I shared with you our need for servers. And... um, And in uh, a few days, uh, two people, well, three in total, because someone at 8 o'clock did so too, uh, have offered themselves to be servers. And uh, I give thanks for uh, Virginia and for Barry and for Jackie uh, offering themselves in that way. And um, and we're just beginning. Um, We need uh, three more people to assist Wally with the filming. So if you, Wally was saying to me earlier, if you have ever filmed anything on a camcorder or a phone um, uh, or or, uh, have some rudimentary computer skills because at the moment we are recording and uploading, then he would like to talk to you and we would like to set up a schedule. Um, And um, though I didn't say this today, I I said it uh, in a note earlier this week, um, we might begin soon uh, as we're uh, working towards that. Uh, so that Wally doesn't have uh, a horribly onerous task uh, to pick which Sundays we will film until we can have a full complement of uh, of a month. And uh, that's my goal also for restarting our godly play work, uh, our our ministry to our young people uh, during the Liturgy of the Word. Um, You'll see uh, no young people here today, no children. and, uh, and that's because we don't have a program for them in this liturgy. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm asking people to consider a call to that ministry for which there will be training and lots of support. And, um, and uh, prayer leadership, public reading of scripture, uh, parish leadership, and ministries in other parts of our, of our community all are things which as we reopen, we need to renew and have people consider call. And then as it says in your bulletin, I believe, uh, we need both a coordinator of and hosts for fellowship after church, or coffee hour as we sometimes call it. Uh, That might be lemonade for a few more weeks outside depending on the weather, Uh, but we need both a coordinator and people willing to take their turn. We're allowed to have 25 people for a coffee hour indoors in poor weather, and that number we hope will continue to grow as, as people 
get vaccinated and our numbers keep dropping and so on. So um, lots of things for you to hear calls to do. Um, and, uh, and maybe some I haven't mentioned. So uh, I pray you will hear that call. Leanna. Oh, well, she's walking up here. I forgot to mention audio. Um, Garrett asked me to say that he too would like some backups, people to learn the audio system and give him breaks on Sundays and, uh, and uh, you'll have a good teacher. Thanks, Reverend Ken. I'd like to say, Wally, I know how to take a picture with a phone, but that's about <laughs> it. So, <laughs> but I believe that there are other people out there who have that gift. Um, in response to today's reading, there was many readings, many, and in our songs, and in Reverend Ken's um, preaching about a sense of call. And so I want to speak to you today about something that I've been called to. Um, you know as your PWRDF or Primates Fund uh, representative, there are many things that the organization is looking for support in. But I felt a call to respond to the current um, project that they're working. My professional background before I retired was in obstetrical nursing. So I've been involved in delivering many babies and never without light. It was always took place in a hospital where there was lots of light. So when I learned about the Primates Fund project called Let There Be Light, it really touched my heart because it's a project that is trying to raise funds to buy solar suitcases to provide light for births in rural health clinics in Mozambique. And I know it sounds like a little tiny project very, very far away when there are many places that need our help. But I think because of my background in nursing obstetrics, it really touched my heart. So when, when I felt that call, I went to Reverend Ken and I said, do you think we could participate in the Primates Fund project that they're doing to raise funds for this? And so he agreed to get on his bike and my husband, who I went to, and he agreed to get on his bike, and Al Schutz agreed to get on his bike, and I don't bike, but I said I would walk. So what we're gonna do is on September 25th, some people in the parish are gonna ride bikes, and some of us are gonna walk, and we're looking for people to support that project. So uh, all the information is on the back page of the bulletin. It's a very uh, user-friendly website, but if you have trouble with it, there's a phone number, and they're extremely helpful in helping you figure out how to make a donation. But if you would prefer to do something in the traditional way of getting donors on paper, there are forms like this that Reverend Ken has, that I have, and that are at the back of the church. So there's several ways that you can, um, that you can help us. You can also walk with me, because. By the end of it, I know I'll be limping around and I'll be glad for the support. Hmm. Or you can bike with Ken and George and Al. And I just was profoundly touched today by the choice of the final hymn. Hmm. I don't know whether Peter knew what I was going to say, but the, the, the hymn is Let There Be Light. And I just want to close with the first verse of that. Let there be light. Let there be understanding. Let all the nations gather. Let them be face to face. So I just encourage us at St. James to see other nations face to face and let there be light. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Leanna. We will not be gathering for fellowship after the service today. As I said, we're waiting on coordinators and we are also unsure about the weather. Uh, but uh, uh, let's look for that in the weeks to come. Uh, this week is also the community dinner for September. Uh, there's a bit of a, a description there, and um, um, I don't see about an invitation for assistance, so it seems like the team is probably already made up, uh, but you can always call the offer, office to offer your help uh, if the team on duty this month uh, needs that help, and of course, you can always share the news about that meal with friends and neighbors to come in off the Beckwith Street entrance and, and, uh, and share at least in our hospitality, if not in fellowship, uh, indoors. Let's sing our closing hymn, number 403, 
I let all things now living. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.